Reporting in Ashland, I'm here with Maverick at a demonstration and I'm going to turn it to Maverick for more information on what's going on. This is from October to January in just the last couple of months. These are all the 72 and 24 hour notices that I've been given to move spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on Section 8, I'm on HUD, I'm on low income housing, I'm on shelter lists, but they will not take all three of my kids with their age range, or not at all. So we're tired of being mistreated and not heard. I am happily unhoused, but not everybody here is. Okay, a lot of them want to be indoors. Having lived in Eugene and seen the services they had there, I would like to see more of that here. They're so far out that I can't get to them. They're criminalizing us for sleeping. When the 9th District says that it needs to be for actual criminal behavior. The unhoused has the right to peaceably count. They um, do amalgam of tickets. There's an exclusion zone down here. If you get too many tickets for smoking, drinking, etc., etc., they can amalgam those and they can throw you in jail for 30 days. So if they can force homeless out anywhere, it's not give us shelters, not give us a place to be. Well, you can't smoke here. You can't do this. So you can't go anywhere. Just go somewhere else. Just do this. Just go away. We will get told a million times, out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. If you're out of sight, we won't harass you. They'll still find me and they'll still follow me and they'll still write me a ticket and trespass me from another area, even though there's no other spot for me to go. So I've been changing the verbiage. I'm not camping, I'm surviving. I'm habitating. It's a sanctuary. It's a tabernacle. But the persecution by Ashland police, if you're homeless, especially trans Medford, even worse, it's, it's just as bad. Same thing, they go up and down the Greenway and they'll do a sweep and take down everyone's tent and kick everyone out. And there's people still living in, down on the Greenway from the Alameda fires in tents, and that's the reality. So yesterday we stood out with signs and got support and honks, and then it turned into a peaceful protest. We've been here overnight. We've not had any notices yet. So we'll see how much comes of it, because this is just the first day of it. And then we'll wait until we get a notice, and we'll move to the next spot and keep going from there. It takes months for a shelter to even be opened, and all of them are only a couple of days during the worst weather. Maverick handed me a flyer for an emergency shelter opening that evening, so I headed over there to see if I could speak to somebody looking for shelter. Tonight's the first night they're opening, so I don't know what I'm getting into. In Medford, according to the National, they go by the National Weather Service on whether they open or not, and it has to be 32 degrees or colder and high winds or below 25 or snow. Tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. it's going to be 31 degrees and they're not going to open tonight. But they're supposed to open tomorrow and Monday because tomorrow night is supposed to be 19 degrees. Everybody knows that Ashland is 8 to 10 de degrees colder than Medford on any given day. I got a couple tokens and I rode the bus. So I'm tired of being cold and we're going to see what they have to offer. So, I mean, I don't care about sleeping on the floor. You know, I sleep in my car. What's the difference? The homeless need a board member. They need a liaison. They need someone that can facilitate between housed and unhoused. Administrators are not unhoused. They get the funds. They distribute the funds. They have no idea what sleeping out in 28 degree weather requires. Habitation zones. We're trying to change it from sur camping to surviving to habitation. Give us the resource, let us have a kitchen, let us make a program where we actually feed ourselves. The biggest thing that I wish there was more of is understanding. Uh, the first time was in 2005. I camped out at Rogue Elk Park a lot. That was my first extent with homelessness. I used to live in Roseburg back in 06. What happened there, my ex-wife passed away in 07 due to complications from a heart transplant. And my son was everything, so I immediately dropped everything in Roseburg and came back to Shed Cove, take care of him, and give him the best quality of life. And I did that, and I did my job, and he passed away in 18. So he graduated from Phoenix High School back in uh, 2015 with honors. He went to college for a year and a half online, and then his health started diminishing, so he took a break, and then it just kept going down from there you know so he, he didn't get the two thousand dollar scholarship he got the 500 because he couldn't go out and do all the leg work in the winter time you know it's this time of year you know november or whatever but he couldn't go out and uh go get all the proceeds to get uh signatures and stuff like that the kid to beat him out for the two grand 
was obviously not in a wheelchair or confined to a wheelchair, so he beat him out for that. But yeah, I hope this place is more comfortable for you, man. <laughs> We're thank find thank out. you for sharing with me. Uh, what was your name again? Charlie. Charlie. Good to meet you, Charlie. I'm All Johnny. right. This is Lily. Good Bye, luck Lily. with your story. Thank you. I'll see you around. All right.